Today we create a quick to build router table with a special fence mechanism. Enjoy! Good morning fellow woodworkers, welcome back to another video. I do not like this router table. Why? Because I built it on an afternoon, just really quickly. It did a good job up until now, but now I want to have a precise and rather good looking one. This router table that I got right here has been made out of melanine um, coated plywood, I think. And overall, this is a pretty good material to create things like fences and chicks and the like. But you can already see that it's just not looking good overall. The fence is not square to the table and the like. This is why I'm going to get rid of it starting today and we are going to build one from MDF plates that I have lying around here. This router table actually comes with a twist <laughs> in the true sense. In normal case you know router tables where you can take the fence and just let it slide okay across the table and it's basically parallel to the cutting plate you have on your router to the bit but this one actually comes with with a twist and a lot of cool mathematics behind it i'm running flammable maths that's my main channel i'm a studied teacher um, teaching mathematics at schools and i am going to present the mathematics to you too over on flammable maths and a bit here too so stay tuned up until the end you can um, build along if you're interested in this router table and now we are going to dive right in shall we at first I prepared the main table base from a piece of 1.6 cm thick MDF. I did not have a hand saw back then, so I had to use a fence for my jigsaw, which still turned out pretty nicely anyways. Next up I marked where my router and its enclosure should go. And then I drew the circular hole into the MDF where our router bits will ascend through. 1.6 cm of MDF is rather thick, so I wanted to inlay my router a bit. Consequently, I simply followed the marked trace of my router space to create the inlay by hand. Perfect fit, nice. I couldn't find a better way to pre-drill my holes, so here you can inspect me getting, let's say, creative. Pre-drilling and countersinking next. And then I checked if my holes actually fit the router. Now for the enclosure. First I cut three pieces of MDF to size according to my previously made measurements. Then after I pre-drilled and screwed everything together in a U shape, I proceeded to verify the proper fit on my table and pre it again. Always pre trill it, it'll make your life way easier and most importantly will keep your build alive. Finally attaching the enclosure to the table. I then install the router again and attach the floor panel to the bottom. Please note that the floor panel and router will be quite a few centimeters apart from each other. Reason for that is the small laboratory lift that I'll put between them as a router lift. To automatically stop my router I used cable ties to fix the button in place. And the last thing to do was to install the special fence on top of the router table. For this I cut a really square piece of spruce to the width of the router table and blend it just for the aesthetics. To use the full conventional milling capacities of non-flush trim bits, we also need to carve out a bit of the fence. I did this using my table saw. Once that was done, I screwed another but smaller piece of spruce to one end of the fence which is going to make for our rotating arm. 
And lastly, I screw the two table, making sure that the front part of the fence aligns with the dead center of our rotor bit shaft. And just to be really safe, I lastly installed an emergency on-off switch. Stay safe, kids! Cutting the final table to size and that's it. And now we are basically done with the router table. All you have to do now is clamp it to your workbench or screw it to your workbench. And if you don't have a workbench or a workshop, this always makes me so sad, goodness. Then you can always, like me, clamp it to your table saw. And after you're done with that, I'm going to tell you a bit about how to adjust the fence such that you can get your desired centimeters, inches to route. Now I clamped it to my workbench. <laughs> and the cool thing about this design is that the case where our router is in included is going to push in a normal case against your workbench or wh whatever you clamp it to if you got the um, capacities. Then it's going to be nice and square to the table and you can start cutting even pieces which weigh a lot. So this wouldn't pose any problem even with these MDF plates. Now here comes the most interesting part, at least for me. <laughs> it's about the rotation. So what you might notice with this fence right here is that you can only rotate it. Every time new people see this router fence or just this table in general, they are asking me, how are you supposed to cut, for example, one centimeter? So like, where is one centimeter away from your router bit? I get this asked a lot and, and people don't understand at first why this jig actually works. Now the cool thing is over on my channel Flamble Maps, you can find the mathematics surrounding this router table. How you can actually find out which angle you need to take on this router jig in order for you to get a certain distance to the router bit. It's absolutely fascinating. It's like four pages of pure mathematics and analytic geometry. You should definitely check it out. Link can be found in the description. But we are not here for mathematics on this channel, not exclusively. What we want to do is we want to do DIY projects. And you can actually find out really easily where to place your router fence such that you can get, for example, distance of one centimeter to the bit. For this, you're just going to take yourself a piece of wood, for example. Then let's suppose we want to have a distance of one centimeter right here, and then we want to cut a groove, for example. To do this, you're just going to place your workpiece against your fence. If it's a sacrificial piece of wood, then you can just clamp your fence to your router table and then just start cutting into your wood and see if the distance, for example, the one centimeter that we wanted to have here is already sufficient. If not, you can go ahead and just re-rotate your fence in some way. Or another thing that is possible is you are going to turn your bit into the direction where when it hits your piece, your piece of wood, it's going to have the widest diameter of it all. And then you are just going to see if it does work out with the centimeters or not. But this is just a rough estimate. I would always advise you to take a sacrificial piece of wood and just see if the distance works out. Now I'm going to do a test cut. What I want to do is I want to cut a groove into here, but under one condition, I want to have a distance of seven millimeters, for, for example, it really doesn't matter, before the groove starts. I'm going to use the method with the sacrificial piece of wood and we're going to see if it actually works as I claim it does. Now you are going to probably roast me because I wasn't using some kind of push stick or pressure board from above. <sighs> I will at some point, but I need to learn first. I'm terribly sorry. I need to have an accident before I learn to use a push stick. And now I'm going to measure everything. And if we take a look at that, seven millimeters. Isn't that good? You see, everything works out even with this weird mechanic. And the mathematics behind it is absolutely wonderful. And this basically concludes today's video. <laughs> There's probably an outtake at the end because a wasp was <laughs> attacking me. Never mind. 
If you did enjoy what you have seen today, then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel and to show your support by going over to my personal um, shops, damage.eu, or maybe my Patreon to become a supporter of the channel. Otherwise, I thank you for watching the video up until the very end. And don't forget to build along if you do enjoy what I have built here today, if this design is to your liking. Also, Flamble Maths, don't forget to check out the mathematics behind this wonderful um, router table. Other than that, please stay safe, even during Ronald Chan. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao. And this basically concludes today's video and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. If you did so, then definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel and to watch the video. Here's a wasp surrounding me. This is freaking annoying. Go away, wasp. Ugh. Damn animals.